What's up guys, Jordan from Bennett's Customs. We are back on another episode, working on the Roadster again. What I wanna do, um, I do have those cracked ribs that I had mentioned, so I'm a little bit short of breath and can't do too much heavy lifting at the moment, but I still wanna try and get something done on this. So I think what I am gonna do is uh, get those wheels and tires on, and then once those are on, I'm going to work on this guy here. So this is the headlight bar. I'll pull this out, lay it down, explain a little bit more, but what I wanna do is get that mounted on here just for a nice little piece so that we can kind of visually stand back and go, yeah, this is kind of the plan of attack. This is what we're after. As you can see, we got the old toaster oven on the hoist as well. This is uh, another project that, you know, kind of we'll be touching base on it as we go. As you can kind of see, I'll just give you a little sneak peek. This is the mock-up motor. This isn't the, the actual one you're using, but that is a two liter, three cylinder radial motor used in like gyrocopters and uh, airboats from a company called Bespoke Engineering or Radial Motion as they go by as well. They are in South Australia. Ben and I were fortunate to go over there and actually get a tour of the shop and meet all the guys. And we got to go for a test drive in one of their um, Volkswagens that they had with one of these in it. It was like a early Beetle, kind of an off-road type Baja style. Yeah, I think that was like their first motor that they ever kind of designed. Yeah, it went like a shower of shit. It was wild. Um, I didn't really know what to expect. You know, I'm pretty biased to early motors and love flatheads, obviously, but this was, uh, this was pretty cool um, to experience and to see the amount of design and development that's gone into them and that. And, yeah, it's really neat. It uses all LS components, which is really cool. And if you want to learn a little bit more on it, Jay Leno just did a little, a little video, the Jay Leno Garage. I think it just came out yesterday. And he does one on the gentleman who has purchased the bodies from Myers Manx, and they are using these, these motors. So there is one um, in that, and you can kind of hear it and see what it's like, see what it's all about. So jump over to his channel and check it out. It's pretty cool. Uh, anyways, back to the Roadster. We are going to right now pull these wheels and tires off and then swap them up for these ones visually have a look at it and then i'm going to explain to you what i'm going to do with that um, headlight bar Well, that looks a massive difference. That actually looks pretty cool. Um, so what I wanna do is I have this headlight bar. I'll just take it over to the table. So what I have here is this really cool kind of like cast headlight bar that obviously, you know, this is where the fenders would have been, where it would mount to. These are threaded, so bolts would come up and kind of go into here. Um, you know, a little bit of old chrome where something was obviously mounted there. And uh, same on this side. Um, and then what I have is a set of guide. I think these are, yeah, 903-Js. Um, and they're, you know, they kind of got the patina, the look that I was after for this thing, which is exciting. Um, and I got these from my mate at, um, my mate Matt from Seattle Speed Shop. Um, if you guys jump over, he's got a great YouTube channel. I'll put the link down below in the description. Make sure you jump over to his channel. He's just finished one of his, his trucks that he's been building for a while, or that he's had for a long time, and I think he's just kind of revamped it and put it on the, put it on the road, so he's been pretty excited about that. Um, but yeah, 
I was lucky enough to go with Dad when we were picking some other pits up. We popped in, said hi to him and his partner, and um, yeah, I was able to grab these headlight buckets off him, so you knew he was going to the right, right cause. What I want to do is somehow make this somewhat work. I love the curve in this. Um, it's a bit tricky. They are kind of, everything's quite casted in there. Um, and so I need to figure out the best way of mounting this. This is what I'm thinking. Um, you know, we got the grill set up kind of where it's going to go. And then, you know, there's various different places where you could mount these. I usually run mine a little bit lower. Um, but yeah, so I obviously want to run this and I really like these cast bits. So there's like a few different options I think I'd need to try and do to make this work. It might even be like a little bit too narrow. Don't quite know, but I just really like the bar. So what I was thinking even is maybe if I kind of cut the bucket off as best as I can. And then, you know, what I was thinking is I really like the look of, how can I show you as an example? I really like the look of it kind of sitting in like setting on that. So these come down and then I could like bolt it from, from up top. It might look kind of weird and goofy, but I don't know. Maybe this is probably a better example of this side. Something kind of like that. Like I could almost utilize those holes and then have some front ones, but is it a bit too much going on? But I just thought it'd be kind of cool to kind of twist and bend and manipulate this in order to make this work somehow. So gonna try and maybe get some measurements Maybe I'll kind of mock this up and try and hold it up and then, you know, we'll take some back shots to figure out, you know, where, where it's going to be the best, best looking um, uh, height wise and then width wise too. I just want to make sure we're doing the right job. If this doesn't work, I have another couple of ideas I was thinking too with some early uh, Model A fender mounts that you guys have seen where I, um, I made them the, uh, the exhaust, like the, the mounts that held the, the end of the um, exhaust on the race car. So those would actually look pretty cool too if they you know, were bolted um, on the side and then kind of bent up and then had the, the headlight as well and maybe didn't even run a crossbar, but I don't know. I just like this. I'm not sure what it's off of. If anyone knows what it is, please tell me. We'll try and hold it up. I'll put you on the tripod. We'll try and get a couple of gauges of, um, you know, a few different options of where I think I like it. And then we can uh, kind of work off that and start to create something. I'm just trying to wrap my head around what would look, what would look best. I just really like the idea of that. I think it's so cool. Virtually bolt it down there, cut this off bend those to where I like it and then weld that across. That it just means that wherever those sit, that's kind of it. So usually they kind of, you know, sit anywhere in here. When you're doing these too, you obviously just want to take into consideration where your steering's going to go. You don't want to have them way out and over like this and then, you know, your steering comes and you hit your headlight. That's basically common sense. But yeah, so you want to make sure you're kind of allocating space for everything. I do know the radiator's got to come forward a little bit to allocate where the, um, or the shell needs to come forward for the, the radiator itself. What I think I might get into trouble with here is that these don't quite go wide enough in order to get past the grill, uh, they're actually okay. So the only on other option I would have is what I could do is cut these off. Then I got my main bar that then we could kind of sit wherever it's gonna go. We can kind of blend those off. And then what I could do is actually just scout these out, turn this that way, put it up to it and, um, and weld them wherever they sit. They may even sit kind of out here. But if I weld, maybe use a bit of silicon bronze or just, yeah, basically just weld it together. And, and then uh, I could texture it to make it look and have the pitting that this does. Yeah, I don't know. I think that'd look really neat. Something, just something a little bit different. I'm just trying like, 
I haven't thought about doing something like asymmetrical. I've mentioned that before. I love asymmetrical stuff, especially even asymmetrical surfboards. They're awesome, just the way they even look. So I'd have my, my horn over here probably, and then, you know, something over here, or maybe like they both come off one side. I don't know. I'm kind of, I'm thinking out loud, but that's, you know, it's kind of cool to do that. I wish sometimes that you guys were live and you could yell at me for doing dumb shit or say, hey, that's a good idea. No, I think I've answered my question, so. What I need to do is I need to cut this through here and then we'll kind of just blend all this, make it look like it kind of is supposed to finish there. And then wherever this meets up, I'm gonna, I'll bolt this down on the frame and then wherever it comes to is kind of where it's gonna go. And then we have, you know, essentially a little bit different of a shape. So we could go kind of steep on the inside and have like the kind of nice, like straighter foot um, maybe come. So it's gonna be more like, more like that. Maybe it's a bit too much going on, you know, less is more, but it could just look different, something fun, you know? Ultimately, if it looks shit, I'll just pull it off and put a, make another headlight bar or I'll use a Model A one or even a 32 bar or something like that, you know? There's, there's some somewhere, I just don't know where they are. Oh, and I wanted to show you something too. All right, I have this really cool um, Royal Automobile Club Associate, and it's the uh, Club of Queensland, which is neat. Not that I've been there or done anything over there, but it's cool, it's numbered. It's uh, really worn. I got it from a mate of mine, actually, who I had had a Roadster that I purchased from him. And it's just a really neat, special piece. I just love the, the um, you know, all the detail in it and stuff like that. You can kind of see it's uh, really quite cool. But I thought that would be a really neat piece. You know, if I have the, the horn, just grabbing it. It's funny, I'm like already looking at the small details on this thing where there's like so much I need to do, but I, um, I kind of enjoy doing these bits. So it's fun to do once in a while. So. What I could do is, hypothetically speaking, I could even, technically the horn actually has a mount to go onto a bar. This is a Walla one from a, from a Harley Davidson. So I could essentially stick this on, on there, which actually probably looks a thousand times better. And I could even leave the crest for down here, or I could potentially not use this at all, or vice versa. Could have the horn make a mount for it there make a nice little mount for this and put it up here or leave it all off completely. Maybe I just put a single vintage fog light that I have right there and I have a really cool cast British Columbia um, bit that I got from my mate back home. So that could be another really neat idea. We're gonna get this over to the fab table. I'm gonna explain a few things and then we're gonna start cutting. All right, so right off the bat, you can see that I believe these are, um, yeah, these bolts were originally, probably came in from inside the fender and they bolted into this. So I'm assuming this has been drilled and tapped. So I need to get these out. Um, so what I'm gonna do is actually cut these off so that I can put this in the vise. And then we're gonna heat these up. I might have to weld a nut to each of them. Hopefully we can get them out. It might take some, a um, few curse words, but hopefully we can get them out and. I can save the threads or just chase them and then, you know, that way we can kind of bolt that down. So, all right, we need to cut these. This is a shout out to G-Wiz Cycles. They have these awesome little cases that they come with. I've shown you these before. This is the nice little red velvet case that you get and you get your little safe, safety glasses. These are from G-Wiz Cycles. He's over east. There's his website right there. Absolute legend of a bloke. Um, really nice guy. And he manufactures some really cool bits. Um, I even have some bungs here that I got from him. So he had these and I was gonna use these for the steering column, which was great. But these are my old ones that I've absolutely flogged and you can still kind of see through them, but you can see how bad they are. So we opted those ones out for the new green ones, which are really cool. Really cool, so if you guys like kind of a vintage style safety glass that still has your edge on them, so it's from uh, Debris, 
coming in and hitting you in the face. Um, these are really cool. I'll put the link in the description. Basically you wanna try and cut them as close to that as possible. I'm just gonna go for it. So now we're left with our headlight bar, whether we put it that way or this way. And then we are left with these obscurely looking weird um, feet, which I could cut and we could make them go any which way. But I don't know. I think this could be kind of cool or maybe it could look completely terrible. But we're gonna give it a crack and we're gonna see what it looks like. I may even just like cable tie these all together once I get these out. And this could be a big waste of time or it could look really neat. So we're gonna put this in the vise now. We're gonna heat these up. I'm gonna grind these smooth. I might have to weld a, uh, a nut to them. And then uh, we'll see if we can get these out. All right, so we got it in the vise. And what I'm gonna do is just wire wheel the bolts and then just kind of clean up the top with the little air angle grinder. And then we can um, have some clean material to weld our nuts to. And hopefully just by zapping them, we'll get them hot enough where they'll want to come out. Here's hoping you haven't made up your mind. All right, so I'll get some bolts to stick on there. Could get that on there. Probably trying to shoot for some, oh no. Ooh, that kind of threads on. That's what we're talking about. Might just try and zap them with the MIG, see if that's good enough. Kind of get closer and show you what I've done. So they're in there. So all I'm gonna do is just try and put a fair amount of heat. We're just gonna try and weld the nut to those. And then hopefully with the spike, if it being hot, it should shrink a little bit and we should be able to crack these off. But that's in the perfect world. Let's see what actually happens. Just dropped the wire speed down a, f a little bit and uh, turned up the heat. Hopefully we can get a good little buzz on these. Might just try it while it's still hot. I'll just grab our... Okay, we have spin. Not sure exactly what's coming out, if it's broken, but I think we have got the stud out. Yes! And the threads still look awesome. Woo! It's hot, don't know where it is, don't wanna step on it. Oh, the new boots. All right, let's weld this guy up. Just letting that heat penetrate a little bit. Now we're going to try and do the same thing. Just go back a little bit. You can kind of, as you go, you can kind of bring it back, you know, when you're kind of tapping something. Makes it a little bit easier. But somehow. All right, so we've got two for two so far. This is a great sign. I'm gonna keep that one so I know what thread it is. It's definitely probably not gonna be metric, but. All right, so we locked up. I realized the camera died through the last one, but we got all studs out. And the, the last one was actually the tricky one. I broke it twice, but was able to weld a couple nuts on. So these are our little welded nuts on the studs, but we're actually just gonna use these just to kind of hold it into place and see what this looks like. What I'm thinking, I might not even utilize these holes. 
like I mentioned, there are two different kind of ways. So there's a, a steeper angle on this one and then there's nothing on this. So what I could essentially do is if it looks silly, we could just weld, we could just cut this off and not have the pair. Um, and then, you know, do it that way. I think it looks better that way actually. So, you know, I could just run it a little closer. This is kind of pretty far out. So, um, the bar is going to be way out here, but I know the grill has got to come back this way a little bit, but just for an example purpose. So that's kind of coming off and then kind of going a bit steeper, or we could have it the opposite way where it's kind of more drawn out. It's like perfectly shaped to the actual curvature of the front frame horn too, which is pretty awesome. Okay. So now we have them on, which looks really neat. And then I'm gonna grab a zip tie so we can actually hold these down. That few different options I was saying with this, right? We could have it sit like that. And then, you know, you kind of see the front of it and then you got your light on there which you're not really gonna see regardless of which way you put it. But, and this is purely just to gauge an idea of what this looks like. It could look awful. Okay, so let's just snip these off. So you can kind of see where I'm, where I'm going with this. You know, and if we clean it all up, I still feel the front might be a better idea than running out the back like that. But um, we can just cut it off and I'll flip it around. I think the other way is actually gonna look the best. Forwards, which is kind of weird, but okay. So let's just hold those like that. Wow, I actually do not mind that at all. Okay, there's a bit going on. Maybe it's just the spreader bar. That's kind of playing with my eyes. Maybe we lose the spreader bar. I don't know. I think that looks really, really cool. You can kind of see what I mean. Like with the little mounts on there, goes across to the other side. The back side still looks quite neat. Like I could just do the one and that would look cool too. And cut this guy off and just have one come up to it and then weld that in. But this thing, it looks kind of neat with two. Be nice and sturdy. You could bloody tow a car off that. I'll put the little horn on there. It looks kind of cool. It's kind of hard to see in here with obviously, you know, everything in the background. And I did roll it outside last night and just had a look, but you know, it's kind of neat. Like it falls down. That would be bolted down as well. Like it really follows the frame. And then, you know, we can kind of finish all this off and then texture it again and, you know, make sure everything's I think once it's like welded into place, I still will have to heat up these ends and kind of twist these to make sure we get everything perfectly level for headlight adjustment. It kind of looks cool. You know, maybe there's a bit too much going on here with the, with the um, kind of the spreader bar and then the horn and then the lights, but I think it'll look good. And I have some cheap lenses somewhere. I don't know exactly where they are, but I think they might be above the toilet. So I'm gonna jump up there and see, just so I can put them in and visually kind of see everything. But I really like the way that this looks. I even look like looking through and seeing the flathead. I thought about some absurd idea of running the radiator somewhere in the back and leaving it all open, which would be kind of neat. A bonus to that would be I could move the 32 grill forward a little bit in order to get the Model A hood to sit on without having to do any extensions, which would be kind of a neat idea. Um, the cool thing is, is if I wanted to, I could kind of heat up where the weld is itself and either lift it up or kind of drop it down. Um, you know, there's, there's no rules to say I wouldn't be able to, you know, bring this where it makes contact weld it and then it kind of kicks up and then the headlight sits a little higher or I could kind of drop it down and have it sit like that. But to be honest, I think where it's sitting is a really good spot. And what I thought about too is, you know, I have these little ends here and I'm not running indicators unless I do have, I do have the, the um, guide tops that we could stick on these, but these are kind of a, they're a much shallower light um, and smaller than your uh, traditional kind of guide headlight that sits a little bit deeper. I'm gonna go get some hardware for here. 
I'm going to mount these because one thing I want to make sure I'm doing is it's not too far forward. I think I could go back a little bit and, and maybe it'll kind of relieve the, the clutter here. You know, I have the radiator kind of edge sitting almost center or just a little bit forward because I believe the radiator kind of sits a little bit like that. So where the grill shell would go, it's probably a little bit more forward than, than where I would traditionally have it. So what I'm going to do is where I've mounted these, I'm going to, I want to set these like they're originally were here, but what I want to do is actually set them back a fair bit and then center them on the frame. So it kind of more or less sits like that. So they're a little bit tapered as well, which I think would look really nice. So all I'm going to do is just run a center line down here, measure. So I've got both of them done, drill two holes, and then we'll get some hardware and then we can kind of get this set up where we want it. They do make a really nice marking tool I've recently seen. So you don't have to use old calipers. They're starting to get pretty dull on the edges for me doing this so much, but yeah, I didn't think I liked the steep to, I really don't know, eh? I'm gonna stick the other one on the other side and have a little, get an audience call. I'm gonna stand back, have a look. Might get the boys opinion, see what they think. Well, I need your opinions, both of you. Yeah. It's totally weird and random, but get an outside point of view. I gotta mount these cast pieces before I put the headlight bar on. And if you look at them, they're two different ways. So one's like steep and then comes out and the other one comes out and goes steep. And then the headlight bar obviously sits, oh, it's gonna sit like that. And then the headlights and grill will go behind. So it's whether or not I run the long leg this way or the long on this side and then it kind of goes steep like that. Yeah, so I like that side too. Kind of just comes up. Yeah. Yeah, all right, sweet. Unanimous vote. So now that I got those center punched, pilot hole through. <laughs> Winding round words in my head Shivering pines say that summer is dead Just feels hollow and my hands are numb Okay, so we're just gonna bolt these in now. I've just run a tap through and cleaned them up as well just to make sure there, there's no gunk or rust or anything in them now. Fit. That's as sturdy as it's gonna get. I've still got lots of material here. I'm gonna grind out a little bit of this just so I can get it to sit properly. That's basically what we're up to. I think it's just gonna look so friggin' cool. A little bit closer too, I moved it up. I like how it's centered on the line. I might actually just stick that, stick that 32 grill back on. And then I'm just gonna pop a headlight in, make sure we're not in contact with the, with the grill. Yeah, this is spot on, looks really cool. So now what I want to do is we're going to notch this out slightly so that the bar itself will actually sit in there. Um, but what I might do before that is just kind of clean this area up where we've cut these off so that it's a little bit easier to do um, rather than when these are all welded on. So I'm going to stick this in the vise. We're going to clean this up. And I'm going to show you a little cool trick that I've learned to try and kind of get it back to that sort of pitted cast look. So just a little texturing idea. And we're gonna try and visually make this look like it was all one piece and came on that frame as it was. So this is the bit that we're working with here. And you know, originally it had come up and then had gone into that cast. So it's whether or not we cut that flush, but then you would see the nut kind of from the backside or if I kind of just round this off and you know, there's kind of like a little shield that showed a, from the front, you don't see it. I might cut this off, kind of reduce a little bit of material, and then we're gonna try and round it all off. Do my best to swallow all the things I've done. You break 
your back, but you still don't have bread. You won't go back on the things that you said. You bleed your heart out, and it takes every drop. You've come too far now to ever stop. Wash me in the water and I'll never go back Even when I'm walking to the land pass You can't trust a man cause he'll just let you down Crooked and twisted we grow from the ground From dust we came in kind of close to what I want. We've just kind of blended this out and we're gonna blend this. So I'm just gonna do that little trick with the small disc. So it's just pulling that guy out. We're putting that smaller one in with the flexi end on it. And then that can allocate our little cut bit. And now we have those soft ends that I was telling you about and that'll just help us kind of blend in these corners. So I'm just gonna show you. So you can already see that it's like taking out all the grinding lines from the harder edge. So it's really rounded it out. Like you could sit there with a file or even some, um, some sanding paper and you know hit it with the DA but the texture I'm kind of going for I don't really need to get too crazy but it is really nice to kind of smooth that out. I'll explain why I have a bolt now instead. You can't trust a man cause he just let you down. Crooked and twisted we grow from the ground. From dust we came in, dust we shall return. You kind of see like that just literally smoothed it right out, which is great. So now for our next trick. But, okay, I'm gonna show you something really cool. Over here, we have, just gonna move this so you can kind of see what I'm doing. This is a needle scaler. And what these are for is obviously, you know, kind of getting into that um, rust scale that you'd traditionally see on, on an old, old frame or, you know, like a set of drums or something that everything's kind of stuck on there. It's just basically vibrates. There's a little hammer inside here and these kind of go back and forth and move around. They got lots of slop in them. So you can basically kind of go along and rip all that rust scale off. Now I've learned this trick from Christian Sosa, and I'll put his YouTube link in the description because if you wanna watch a metal wizard do his metal wizardry, he is the man. He is the best metal finishing guy I've ever seen and his creativity is bar none. You cannot beat it. So what I've done is I've taken it apart and usually these are your little ne needles and they're always cut St like straight and they're very sharp. These ones are actually quite worn in, so I might not even actually have to do it. Um, but usually what you can do is you can take these, go over to your grinder and you just kind of want to round them off so that they don't have a real harsh edge on them. And then you can slide them back in and we can do it. So luckily, I think I'm actually all right with this where we can kind of set this up. I've realized that this has been a flog this thing before, so it's not, um, it's not too bad. So what we're gonna do with this is use this in order to texture the steel that we've just kind of ground off. And we're gonna try and replicate the pitting of the old cast or you know where the rust is. So we're gonna try and get it as close as we can to that kind of texture and and get it right up into here and then we'll just let this kind of age and do what it needs to do. The reason I have that bolt in there is because where the hole is for a headlight, I don't want to damage the, the lip of it too much. So this way I can kind of just get around it and we're just going to see if we can texture this. 
And now this, like, I'm just going to try this. This is kind of a trial. And I'm going to get it closer to the vise so that it doesn't vibrate. And as you can see, so they just vibrate like that. Now we're just going to try and go around this area and see if we can replicate the pitting. Okay, so what I've done is I've just tried out a little bit and it has worked amazingly. So I'm just going to get this out of the way and hopefully this will focus. So you can kind of see the pitting and texture in that and then look at where I've done it. So you can literally see that it looks identical to that basically. I mean these have got a little bit larger pits from the rust but I've only just done it right here and you can basically see that that is almost a perfect match. So I'm just going to take this, we're just going to run it around as many times as you want. We're just going to see if we can texture this a bit more. And like that. It's basically blended and looks, you know, kind of rough and cast looking, really finishes it off. And you could, if you want to go like more extreme, there are different scalers. Like this one's probably only got three, six, nine, 12, 13. And some of them, there's like quite a bit more and they're a little bit like closer together. There's ones that hit harder, have a bit of, bit of a, like a bigger stroke on them. Um, and you know, you could put these off and sharpen them up, but it's, um, you know, this one works perfect for what I'm trying to do to try and kind of get it blended and stuff. So it, uh, you know, it's a cool little trick. I by no means take any credit for it. That's purely, I've seen Christian Sosa um, uh, do it on a lot of his stuff. And he just is a guru of, like I mentioned about his metal texturing and manipulating and kind of his creativity he he uses towards it and moose is here moose has got his ass hanging out and this necessarily doesn't even have to be used in uh in the automotive world at all like i've made like coffee table um you know chairs or uh, bases for stuff and i've kind of done this trick as well um uh, just to try and get it look different it's so much fun texturing steel and you know, kind of naturally just watching it form. I'm really happy with the way that looks. I, you know, it, it almost looks as if that was kind of casted that way. You can kind of see it. So now, you know, where we had originally cut it off, where it was kind of sitting, I think it sat like that. So it sat like that, and now we've obviously cut that off. We've turned it 90 degrees. We've blended, cut it. So what I'm going to do now is mark where these are going to sit. I'm going to grind this material back on the bottom just so I have some nice clean metal for welding. I'm going to grind out this a little bit so that this kind of sits down in it. And then we're going to stick a level across the back of the headlight cup and make sure that it's sitting dead level. And then afterwards, we'll just bring the MIG over here. We'll tack it into place. Then we're going to fill this all up and then we're going to do the exact same deal. We're going to kind of blend it. We're going to make it look like it's all molded properly. And then we're going to use that same technique to kind of hammer it all out and make it look like it was virtually one piece. The headlight bar was made for a 32 rail. You never know. These are the kind of, yeah, this is the stuff I really enjoy doing. So 
This is more the uh, kind of artistry side of the um, car building, not the rust repair, which I hate to do, but I'll get, get to that. All right, so now that we've got it kind of finished on the sides, I've just marked where that other one's gonna sit, and I'm just gonna clean this up with the grinder just so we have some nice clean metal to weld to. Um, and then afterwards we can texture it and do the rest. So I'm just gonna do that now. Okay, so now we need to make sure, I'm just gonna grind these down. We're gonna throw a level across them. All right, so just gonna get the MIG weld welder set up. This is gonna be a little bit tricky, but I kinda just need to tack one side. Can you, can you come over here? And I just need you to hold this, this ball so it just stays up. So yep. use two hands. Yeah, and just keep it on there. I just need to put a ruler right in here. Yeah. So try not to get it, I just need to tack it a little bit. I'll kind of block your finger a bit. Okay, ready? Yep. Perfect. Okay. Ready? Didn't kill you. All right, so now I can just lift it up ever so slightly and tack. Pull that off, just having a look at it. It's about a mil, mil forward. I can live with that. No, it's bothering me. Oh, body bagoose attack this into place and then uh, we can pull this off sand it finish it put it on put our headlights on and see what it looks like maybe even roll it outside guys that always wonder about Josh. He's back over making some food. He just had a shit. That's all he does, he just shits and eats. All I'm doing there is just kind of building up the weld a bit and then kind of flowing it out on the corners. And what I'll do is I'll probably just take this off, put it in the vise and just kind of get under and do it a little bit more. But I'm just trying to build it up a little bit so I have a bit of material to take off before we start to texture it. But, man, there's no way anything's happening to that headlight bar. That is, that's on there. So we're gonna get the welder set up next to the vise. We'll get this pulled off and um, continue welding it. And then we'll start to sand and blend it. Okay, so same deal. I just got it off. And what I'm just gonna do is just put a few tacks on here just to make sure that we've built up enough material to be able to remove a little bit. I've already put a real hot pass on the inside so it's um, nice and strong, but I just wanna kinda build it up a bit so we can kinda smooth everything out before we start to texture it. So I'm just gonna run around, give it some tacks. With like, you know, I'm adding obviously a lot of weld and a fair amount of heat. So I, I would expect this to distort just a little bit. So we can kind of get it close and if we need to, we can kind of pull it out and then just heat it up and then gradually let it um, cool down kind of in its state where it's bolted in. So it won't have any kind of spring to it. Look over your 
shoulder when you go that way This world might take you to a bad, bad place So there's nothing special about that. I was literally just trying to stack it so that we have enough material again to be able to take out. So, so now what we can do, we even get on the file a little bit and the grinder, and then, um, then we will probably end up using that angle grinder with the texture and uh, see if we can get this kind of smooth and then we'll get on to texturing it with the um, scaler. We're starting to blend it a little bit. So this is kind of the same steps we we're doing with the other one, just using the grinder. I got my little tiny 90 degree angle grinder. And uh, uh, I mean, that one's worn out, but I had it square. I had a little 36 grit on there and that was really kind of cutting the meat. So but you can kind of see what we're trying to do here. So we're gonna continue this on the other side. cleaned up and blended. Yeah, so you can kind of see it's really nice and smooth. There's like a nice little shape to it. Same with on this guy. Probably a little bit more material on this one. I could kind of cut this back a bit. I reckon it's pretty nice the way it is. I think I'll just leave it. Anyways, what we're gonna do is get the scaler on and, and um, see what this looks like. Thought that it might be the best thing for us. I was thinking about me. It's kind of hard to see in this lighting, but you can kind of get the idea. Like it is really nicely textured. It, it just looks like I've wire wheeled this area and kind of got rid of the surface rust, which is really cool. So we're going to continue. Stars go out, shelter up above you till they all fall. All right, so now that we have it cleaned up, we are gonna rust treat it with some galmet just to blacken it as well. I'm kind of hoping I can, you know, if I need to, I can kind of touch these areas up, but I think it'll just do, do its job. 
but we just want to see what, kind of hoping this will kind of like blacken it and bring some of the silver texture to the top, which it kind of has already. All right, so that is kind of after I've used the gamut rust converter and sealer, um, it's really kind of brought a lot of that depth out and, and it's probably kind of hard to see, but there's like a lot of the dark is in the low spots, even throughout where we textured it as well. Um, and then, you know, you kind of get your, you kind of wipe it off and it takes the top surface off. So it looks really cool. It's almost like this used to have a bit of old chrome on it. And I know that will because there must have been a badge or something across that. So everything else has been rusted and then this was obviously there. So it still has that little bit of, a little bit of um, chrome there. It's basically it. Man, that looks really, really neat. I could almost get a bit more, you know, like probably actually not round that scaler off, but get them a bit sharper and get a bit more extreme with it. But, you know, once this is bolted on and we got our headlight buckets on there, I think we're gonna be okay. So let's take this over and uh, get some, get some um, shots and, and get, it, get it bolted on the car, see what it looks like. So we are back over at the car. I just swept up a little bit of the swath and stuff. Boom. Cool, well, those are kind of like just mocked up. Um, what's gonna end up happening is after I get the car kind of closer to completion um, and I have it sitting dead level and I kind of know where everything's gonna go, I'm probably gonna have to heat these up a little bit and just twist them in order to get these lights. They are just facing upwards a bit and I think it might be a little bit too much but um, I know there is that adjustment in there but they do look like they need to yeah they definitely need to come forward in order to kind of get them to sit properly so we could actually do it now but um, I'll probably just wait till I get the the rake and suspension and everything totally finished before I do so yeah we just stuck a couple of um, old lenses I had in there they actually don't even fit but they seem to fit. I've kind of taped them in there just to mock everything up. What I was thinking about doing, I'm gonna put the 32 grill back on. This is Kyle's grill and uh, Kyle's the owner of the five window coupe that we're, we'll be doing and kind of telling you a little bit more about as we get into that in the future. Yeah, and we'll probably try and do a little bit of horse trading in order to get this on there because this thing, it literally like fits the patina so well, it's wild. I really like that. I think it looks amazing. You know, there's a bit of bar work going on. You could almost like lop that off and not have that piece. And it's just kind of that little stand with a, with a headlight on it. But I do like that. You know, if the horn's too much, I could always hide that. We can just run a little single fog light or, or just take it off. And unfortunately, like I'd mentioned, we still have to put a license plate on the front of this. So that'll have to go somewhere as well. Yeah, I'm really, really happy with that. Somewhat simple of a, of a process. And then, you know, you get to have a bit of fun with blending and using that scaler to, uh, to kind of texture it and make it all look the same. But I'm, um, I'm really happy with that. And uh, I just wanted to also say thank you to um, our existing members who have kind of jumped over and our new members as well. Pretty amazing that you guys are, you know, kind of real keen to support and kind of see the behind the scenes stuff we get to do in our, in our videos so you know if you guys haven't seen that we do have that behind the scenes um, one there so you can jump in the members area and be able to look for it and we do have these little guys we are um, punching numbers and punching names so these will be getting sent out um, next week for our, all of our members that we have so far also we have some really cool new um, gear coming out we got some long sleeves, some new hats, and some new t-shirts with a couple of new designs on them. So hopefully those will be here uh, within the month. I think we'll leave, leave the video there. Hopefully you guys enjoyed that and kind of learned something. You know, with the blending technique I use with those sanding discs, and as well as, as, uh, as using that, the uh, needle scaler. Um, that thing's just a, yeah, what a cool little idea that is, especially, you know, what you can 
kind of do with it is pretty amazing. Big shout out to Christian for, for showing me that one. That was, that's a, a very neat idea. I think next week, hopefully I'll have the rest of the bits for the steering, uh, steering stabilizer, and then we can do the drag link cross steer steering arms, weld the actual shaft within the column itself. Still haven't done that. That will actually work. We'll put a keyway in and a nut on there and bolt the steering wheel on and this thing will be able to push around and kind of move it with the steering wheel, which will be awesome. And then once that's done, we're kind of into the body, the nitty gritty stuff. I'll probably pull the motor out and start to uh, decide what we're going to do internally with that and get this thing, um, you know, uh, on the road soon. I really want to drive this thing. I'm very excited to see it move under its own power. Make sure you like, subscribe, hit notifications, and we'll see you next week on another episode of Bennett's Customs.